six years ago, I started taking the bus to school. Now, if that wasn't bad enough, someone's older sibling told me we'd be riding the bus with the jail people. Images of large, muscle-bound men covered in tattoos entered my mind. But as the men and women from the correctional facility got on the bus, I grew less nervous. They were just people. As the days went by, I found myself beginning conversations with them. One man told me about how he bought his first car. I talked about school. He told me to make good decisions in life. I'd been taught to view inmates as dangerous, people to stay away from. But after hearing their stories about the correctional facility and their lives, I realized how wrong I was. 2.2 million Americans are incarcerated within our prison system. The United States, the land of the free, incarcerates more men and women than any other nation on Earth. A country with 5% of the world's people holds 25% of the world's prison population, and half of all inmates released end up back in prison. Shaka Senghor, a former inmate, explained in his June TED Talk, the problem with the system is that it is designed to warehouse, not to rehabilitate or transform. The facts show that a system focusing on containment does not work. So the focus of our criminal justice system should be rehabilitation. Limited contact and controlled meeting environments found in prison put stress on personal relationships. Many inmates struggle to rebuild these relationships while attempting to find work with a criminal record. The mindset that is developed in prison isn't compatible with the outside world, and it makes it hard for many inmates to function. PICS, or post-incarceration syndrome, is a collection of symptoms present in many inmates and recently released prisoners. Symptoms of PICS include institutionalized personality traits such as learned helplessness in the face of authority and antisocial behavior, social sensory deprivation in the case of solitary confinement, post-traumatic stress disorder, and even substance abuse disorders caused by the usage of narcotics to manage the other symptoms of, post of PICS. Substance abuse or violent action caused by the symptoms of PICS can lead to reincarceration, which worsens symptoms, which creates an endless cycle. This cycle affects entire populations, not just individuals. According to a 2008 IUC Journal of Social Work, it was explained that individuals living in areas with high crime rates are more likely to commit crime than those living in other neighborhoods. After release, inmates return to their neighborhoods, fall into the cycle of reincarceration, commit crime, thus perpetuating this circle. The innocents of these communities suffer from psychological trauma due to the constant threat of violence. In a recent study by the American Journal of Orthopsychiatry, it was discovered that you do not need direct experience of a crime to be hurt by it. When individuals of a community suffer, I fear for their safety on a daily basis, it can cause some individuals to suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. According to a PBS documentary by Stacey Peralta, young children living in South Los Angeles are experiencing greater levels of post-traumatic stress disorder than children living in Baghdad, Iraq. I once told someone that my uncle is a teacher at the state penitentiary. They assumed that I meant he instructs guards in the use of pepper spray and a taser. They were surprised to find out that he provides education for inmates to make themselves more marketable for employment after release. Teaching inmates life skills not only keeps them mentally and physically healthy by allowing them to be productive, but also decreases the risk of reincarceration after release. The Center for Employment Opportunities, or CEO, is a program created by the Vera Institute of Justice in the late 1970s to help ex-inmates find jobs. This program does more than help former inmates find employment, however. It helps teach good work habits and helps inmates create stability in life. CEO's mission is to place former inmates in permanent, unsubsidized full-time positions that provide benefits and compensation above minimum wage. CEO relies on willing employers to hire participants, and the open-mindedness and empathy of the common citizen. Men and women who have successfully reentered society have said that the greatest struggle of release is forgiving themselves, taking responsibility for their actions, and making amends for their past. What if this didn't have to wait until after release? 
in-prison programs that strive to maintain the mental and psychological health of our inmates should be in place so men and women are better prepared to re-enter society. Access to mental health professionals, therapy, support groups, this is rehabilitation that our penal system should provide. Grendon Prison in Great Britain is doing exactly this. Grendon is a therapeutic prison focusing on rehabilitation. From the outside, it looks just like any other prison. But on the inside, there's less animosity between guards and inmates and a calmer atmosphere overall. At Grendon, inmates attend group therapy where they confront their crimes, evaluate their lives and childhoods, and see how they can avoid returning to crime. The reincarceration rate at surrounding prisons in Great Britain is around 24%. Whereas at Grendon, it's only 8%. 95% of inmates at Grendon have committed violent offenses and 27% have committed sex offenses. Offenders in the United States are no different. Inmates have to volunteer to be incarcerated at Grendon and have to actively want to make a change in their lives. The only difference between Grendon and prisons in the United States is that at Grendon they are given the opportunity, whereas here we don't even give them the chance. Now, this method may not be perfect, and it may not even be the best option, but it does show that prison can rehabilitate, and that prisoners can have the will and the desire to make real changes in their lives. So, how can we help ex-inmates make a change? It starts with being an advocate for awareness. If you're 18, you have the right to vote. Exercise it. Be informed about our prison system and challenge others to do the same. We need to work together to create a society that's more empathetic, supportive, and accepting of former inmates. Don't be afraid to speak with a former prisoner. Don't let your preconceived ideas get in the way. Remember, these are real people with real stories. Those of you who are future employers and business managers, give ex-inmates a fair chance during the employment process. Take the time to listen. A former inmate and current manager at a Springfield, Illinois hotel named Min Costa said this, more often than not, Getting that job on the outside turns lives around. She explains that it makes you feel like a human being when you do something for yourself. In the end, it comes down to our perceptions. When I sat down on that bus, I wasn't sitting next to a large, muscle-bound man. I was sitting next to Dustin, a man who had made some mistakes and wanted to make a change. The problem is that we are not allowing him and thousands of others the opportunity to break the cycle. Will we continue to imprison former inmates with our preconceived ideas and stereotypes? Or will we take the time to listen to the person on the bus and hear their story?